Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have awesome news as usual, as for Ukrainian side, because Ukraine continues its counter-attack all across the northeast part and south part of the front lines. Let's zoom in first to the hotspot, the Kherson region. You can see the huge blue area. Blue, it means that it's confirmed by different resources that the Ukrainian army got this part of the territory under its control the gray area means that we are not sure who is controlling this one but the fighting is ongoing and as you can see ukrainian army every day pushes quite hard on russians so if we go on a timeline it was uh, yesterday and it is today yesterday it was a great success for ukrainian army taking davidov breed under control because it's the crucial crossroad for supplies and now russia was forced to withdraw their forces otherwise they could be circled here could have been circled but still there is the possibility for their forces to be encircled near to uh, borozenske over here because still they have a large group of soldiers but for us it's very important to continue advancement uh, through the Dnieper river on this shore but i don't think that advancement would be fast because while retreating russia blown up this bridge in duchane and what i can see right now that our forces cannot cross uh, this part this water storage over here and there are many of them so it makes our advancement difficult let's say because of the natural obstacles in this area but we're going to continue to push uh, to Kherson so far there is no massive counter-attack from Ukrainian side from Mykolaiv direction however our forces are still here they are present and they are waiting for the final order to start the counter-attack on here soon but first i think we're gonna push the ingulitz river over here dividing russian group and taking novak Havke. and just after that we're gonna cross the ingulitz river over here and advance to here soon from two or even three directions from the leaked sources we know that united states military advisors advised ukraine to start this massive counterattack in the south and they also advised to finish this attack by taking Kherson till the winter time so i think till the middle of december at least because after that it's going to be very hard for ukrainian army to advance so we're going to use just uh, those roads because the ground will be very soft in that area usually we have some sort of the rainy season on the south in december so for us it's very critical to take here so until that time i do expect that's my personal focus that we're going to reach here so until the beginning of 2023 during the winter time i do not expect the massive advancements from either of the sides because it's just hard to do with the resources that sides have ukrainian side has lots of the manpower but in lack of weapons still we're going to receive more from the western lines and i hope with land lease working already we're going to receive more units russian side has lots of armors weapons and shells those are old soviet made but still they can fight but they are in lack of manpower that is why they announced the massive mobilization in russia however the quality of that manpower is very low but still those soldiers can fight and for ukrainian side it's kind of critical to finish this counter-attack taking here soon till the beginning of 2023 then russia may have the advantage in manpower because still those soldiers will fight on the front lines and now let's go to the north east part of ukraine to be particular Kharkiv region, Donetsk and Lugansk region. Today, Ukrainian army advanced towards Lugansk region. I zoomed out a little bit just to show you the timeline for today. So it was yesterday and it is today, my friends. We're advancing quite fast. And from the information I have, we already took this crossroad, Makivka in Lugansk region. I think the next stop for Ukrainian army will be Svatove because it's the main hotspot for the Russian supplies. Also Krumina, we are not far away from this point. And after that, we're gonna go to those big cities of Serdanesk and Lysychansk. Here you can see the big gray area because in the forest there could be some sort of the Russian partisans still fighting for 
Putin. So in nearby future, I see that Ukraine will take all this part of the land, including Starobilsk. And after we're going to take this city, we're going to take the control all over the north part of Lugansk, People's Republic self-proclaimed. My friends, before we go to the latest news and events, please check out my Telegram channel. It's in the video description just below. There I upload regularly the current information of what is happening on the front lines and not only. Subscribe for me there to stay updated. So, for example, here we have Financial Times saying that Ukraine faces critical battle in the south before winter, United States says. Obviously, Ukrainian army got some of the Western allies' military advices. That is why I think we're gonna follow their recommendation taking Harrison City by the winter time. We got some awesome news from Czech Republic. They are gonna supply Ukrainian army with some of the Soviet-made tanks. I hope they're being upgraded for the new variants. So, thank you so much for supporting Ukraine. How many units and what type of the tanks or armored vehicles the Ukrainian side is going to receive? We don't know. Czech Republic says that it's secret information. This is the Ukrainian army on the south part of Ukraine in Kherson region and locals greet our soldiers because they came to bring freedom to our people back. So, it's awesome sign that our army has a great support from locals. Last night it was the big attack by Russian side. They used Iranian-built drones. Those are kamikaze drones capable to carry 50 kilograms warhead. From the information we received, they attacked the local military branch. Luckily, no soldiers were there at the moment and only one civilian got injured. Russia used around 9 drones for that attack, 6 drones reached the target. They have enormously extreme range up to 4,500 kilometers. That is why Russia may launch them from their territory as well. European Union agrees oil price cap in new Russia sanctions plan. So now they have 18 steps to provide sanctions on Russia and they're gonna limit the prices for the Russian oil. Yes, obviously it's good, but from Lithuanian officials we got the information that there are many exceptions in this sanction list. Also today the OPEC countries decided to slow down the oil production and that will rise the oil prices for sure. It's not good for United States of America, it's good for Russia and now United States officials say that it's very bad move from the OPEC countries and probably United states themselves will rise up the oil production. If the oil price is high, Russia has the resources to fight in this war. And video just for fun to you. As you can see, it's modern day Russian helmet. And what's inside? So it's so-called unboxing of the helmet. What are the soldiers wearing on their hats? And you can see uh, it consists out of the aluminium plates this helmet will not stop even the punch to the head not talking about the bullet now i just want to show you the ukrainian blitzkrieg tactics that we use using light armored vehicles and they play a great role during this conflict so here we have the tank and many humvees that are on their way for one more attack so basically we encircle small the units obviously they have artillery fire but they can hardly target our vehicles because they are so maneuverable and we encircle uh, Russian small groups of soldiers causing them to retreat and it's kind of bumpy right my friends i'm gonna keep you updated on situation here in ukraine more information you may find on my telegram channel and now don't forget to press the like to this video it helps me a lot also, if you want financially support this channel, you may find the links in video description below where you may support me on Patreon, PayPal or Donatello, whichever is more convenient for you. My friends, I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.